Hello, my name is Nicholas Morgan. I'm an editor at Aval News, and this is Turkey Abroad. Joining me this morning is Yasha Yakish. He is a former foreign minister of Turkey and a former member of parliament. Yashar, thank you for joining me today. Thank you for inviting me. So the, the, first, the first question I would like to ask you um, has to do with a statement that was released rec recently, just yesterday, where the uh, Turkish interior minister, Suleyman Soylu, he, he, he stated again that the United States was behind the 2016 coup attempt. And this actually caused the US State Department to issue a official denial um, of any involvement whatsoever. So uh, the, these claims are not particularly new since 2016, but why is it, why is it still that there is this belief that the United States had a role to play in the 2016 coup attempt? Uh, I think that there's an entrenched uh, opinion in the quarters close to the government in Turkey that the United States or certain department in the United States were part of the, or among the instigators of the, of the coup carried out in nine, uh, 2016. So it's not new, it is there. And with the denial of the uh, State Department, it will not change, it will continue. Uh, the Turkish part, Turkey part will be, will continue to bring it to the agenda every now and then. And the United States will of course make most probably same type of the statement and bring clarification. I think it is not something new and it is not the end of it. It will continue most probably. One, one question I'd also like to ask is because now that the United States has moved on to a new administration with Joe Biden as the, as the president, um, the, he, the, he is now the third American president um, for, or third or for, the fourth American president rather, that is now um, having relationships with, having a relationship with Turkey under President Erdogan. And we've seen how this relationship has, has worsened over, over the years, um, regardless of political party in the US, regardless of who was president. But I would like to actually ask you um, something co to compare the uh, present to the past, because um, yesterday, na na former, former ambassador to the US, Namik Tan, he also released a statement that uh, he, over Twitter, that um, he was surprised by how um, the Turkish government had issued a, a rebuke of comments made by the State Department over the ongoing university um, protests at Bogazici in Istanbul. And he found that the language was surprising to really even just consider. So um, what I want to ask is how does say Turkish foreign policy making today compared to say previous times, like when, 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 you, when you were still serving in government or during Namek Tan's tenure? Actually the refraction point in Turkey's relations, there are many refraction points uh, in the relations between Turkey and the United States. There was one in 1960s with the letters by President Johnson to Ismet Inanu. Uh, and there was another refraction point when the United States imposed embargo on the sale of or the provision of uh, arms to Turkey. And there were many, but the recent one or the one that is contemporary with the uh, with the coming to power of the ruling party, AK Party, it is with the uh, rejection by the Turkish parliament of an authorization of a motion which were uh, asking the permission of the uh, Turkish parliament uh, to let the American troops go through Turkey and open 
a new front in the north of Iraq. When this motion was rejected, so everything started there and it worsened. Then, then all the three or four presidents that came in the meantime uh, so uh, followed because this uh, this attitude of Turkey was at least one part of the United States administration, mainly Pentagon, did not want to forgive Turkey for having given the impression, first of all, that will, it will authorize the American troops to go through Turkey, to cross Turkish territory, to open a new front in Iraq. When this did not happen, so uh, America, United States started to grow angry and uh, it continues with other events in the meantime. Hmm. You, I, I think that it's a it's, it's a very fair um, characterization to describe um, the United States and Turkey's relationship is also being defined by the constellation of other players that influence it, whether it's Russia, Israel, or some of the Turkey's um, Gulf Arab neighbors. But um, the, of of those, I'd like to first focus actually on Ru on Russia. And what that could mean for what what role that plays in Turkey's relationship with the U.S. Because in recent years we have seen a lot of cooperation between Turkey and Russia, but also a lot of um, competition as well. So um, I know that in the Tur in Turkish newspapers and columns, often they have, uh, especially in the last month since President Biden was was elected. What, is that Turkey can play a role for the U.S. in um, resisting Russia and their expansionism in some areas, even though, of course, it is still cooperating with Russia in places like Syria or Libya. Um, do you believe that the U.S. under the Biden administration really can work together with Turkey in relation to Russia anywhere? Well, uh, first of all, let's go to the beginning of uh... Turkey-Russia relations. After the dismemberment of the Soviet Union, uh, there was an opportunity for Turkey to cooperate more closely with Russia. Uh, at the beginning, there were difficulties because there was lack of mutual trust. trust. And uh, uh, Russia thought that Turkey was competing with Russia in the ex- uh, Soviet republics of Central Asia, uh, the republics of Turkic origin. But later on, uh, Russia understood that uh, Turkey did not want to compete with Russia, on the contrary, cooperate with it, and also to establish uh, brother relations with the countries, uh, with the Turkic republics of Central Asia. So. Uh, the, the starting point of the uh, better relations between Russia and Turkey goes back to the dismemberment of the Soviet Union. Later on, uh, with the increase in the economic relations, uh, these relations have become very strong. And with laying down of the uh, gas pipeline through the Black Sea and uh, receiving gas from the Balkans, etc., And the Turkey's uh, auction to, uh, uh, to, uh, to construct by Russia a nuclear power station in Turkey to be owned and operated by Russia. All these things uh, establish trust between Turkey and Russia. And Turkey wants to continue this. One thing that uh, is... Uh, characteristic in Turkey-Russia relations, that because of many controversial questions between Turkey and Russia, the two countries succeeded to compartmentalize their relations. Compartmentalize mean, in my sense, when there are uh, shaky relations in one area, it should not negatively affect uh, another area where there are good relations. So the, the areas where 
are there are good relations should continue. Those areas where there are lesser less good relations should be kept there. So compartmentalize the relations. Turkey and Russia succeeded in doing so. Then of course uh, the economic relations grew, and uh, then Turkey during the Syrian war or the Middle Eastern war needed badly the air defense uh, system to defend itself from the attack uh, coming from the Middle Eastern countries and opened a tender. China won the tender, but because of the American embargo, uh, Turkey decided to give up the Chinese uh, option. Then another op uh, auction was opened. Russia turned out to be the, uh, the, the, the best competitor, uh, the best complying bidder. And uh, Russia, Turkey bought Russian system of air defense. America ha has grew angry, has grown angry. And this is where we are at present. But Turkey, I understand, uses its rights of a sovereign country uh, to buy what is available in the market and what is the better price. And especially, it could not buy the American uh, air defense system missiles, Patriot missiles, because the United States wanted to attach uh, conditions for the use of it and refused to share technology with it. So all these uh, conditions and circumstances contributed to the to this difficulty, which is now uh, at our hand between Turkey and the United States. Do you, do you think, though, that um, there is room for the U.S. and Turkey to actually, say, work together when it, when it comes to Russia in some areas? Or do you think that it's more likely to continue where Turkey is going to um, maintain its cooperation with Russia at the same time as competing with it where their interests differ? Actually, if you put aside the F, uh, S-400 uh, air defense system, and of course, uh, the counterpart of it is the exclusion of Turkey from the F-35 uh, yes. program, which is connected, two things are connected. If we put aside these things, Turkey, maintains good relations with Russia, as do all the other uh, NATO countries uh, with Russia. So uh, cooperation with Russia is not something unique in the case of Turkey. Almost all countries of NATO, at varying degrees, cooperate one way or another with, with Russia. So I uh, think that Turkey will continue this uh, this cooperation because Turkey is Turkey's economy and Russian economy are so uh, intermingled with each other. Now that the uh, nuclear power station is under construction, it's going to finish in a few years' time, and uh, Turkey buys uh, up to 50 55 percent of its gas from Russia. Now with the Turkey, the Turkey stream or Turkey uh, pipeline, what, whatever it's called. Yeah, the which was, yes, which was due to, to go to Bulgaria, then it, it, was, it was re-diverted to Turkey. All these things uh, makes that the future of the Turkish-Russian relation will be stronger in the future than in the past. Mm. And uh, we have to put aside the question of uh, S-400. And uh, this question has to be discussed, debated between the United States and, uh, and Turkey. Uh, I understand that the Biden administration prefers, unlike uh, Trump administration, to work through institutions, institutional, institutional relations. So Minister of Defense, versus Pentagon. 
State Department versus Turkish Foreign Ministry and all the other ministries alike. So when the pro professionals of these areas get together, they will understand each other better and they will come to a conclusion one way, one way or another, which will satisfy both, both sides. We need to meet somewhere in the middle. Uh, United States should not seek to try to impose at all costs whatever it thinks, believing that what the United States uh, believes is right, what Turkey believes is wrong. This is not the approach. Mm. Uh, and the Turkey, as a sovereign country, of course, will we'll continue uh, this approach. And I hope that uh, the two NATO countries uh, should, should find a middle ground where, where they can protect each other's interests. Mm -hmm. I, also, I also mentioned um, Turkey's relationship with some of their other neighbors in the Middle East, whether it's Israel or Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates. All of those who are owed the United States consider as partners, despite the uh, friction it may have to, with many of them, whether it's you know, on w with Israel and Saudi Arabia when it comes to Iran or on human rights abuses in Saudi Arabia, the war in Yemen, of course, um, Biden announced he's withdrawing support from um, this week. Um, but all of these countries, Israel and the Gulf countries, they have their friction with Turkey as well, that is built up over the years. Um, I know, I know that historically, uh, Joe Joe Biden himself actually worked to um, towards a reconciliation during the Obama years between um, Israel and Turkey, that unfortunately did did not hold up more than a few years, and um, Turkey and Israel have been um, in the. They, they have been considering um, restoring relations at some point, or at least Turkey has been say, stating their willingness to do so um, in recent months. But um, despite the, these frictions between, say, the United States and their other Middle Eastern partners, um, do you think that easing the rivalries, at least between Turkey um, and some of these countries, like Israel and the Gulf, the Gulf nations, do you think that should be a priority again for the Biden administration? Well, if, if, even if it is not a priority for the Biden administration, it has to be a, a priority for the Turkish administration, the AK Party rule, because Turkey is isolated and is, is becoming further isolated in the international arena. So Turkey needs to renew uh, its uh, good relations with the countries of the region. But the countries of the Middle East that you mentioned, Israel, Saudi Arabia, and Iraq, Syria, perhaps Egypt, and perhaps Iran, the dynamics of the the dynamics of relations with between Turkey and these countries are different. The the the, the composition are different. So uh, the uh, uh, the point where it will arrive ultimately are also different. With Israel, Turkey should not have any problem because uh, Turkey and Israel have always been very good friends to democratic countries in the entire uh, Middle East, democratic government. Now that Turkey is becoming more religiously minded democratic country, despite this, it is a democracy better than many Middle Eastern countries. So Israel and Turkey had this common. Furthermore, uh, Turkey was the very first uh, Islamic country to recognize the division of uh, of Palestine into two, into Arab Palestine and the Israeli Palestine. Uh, actually, it works in another manner when. The United, when, when the question of, the, of dividing Palestine into two, into Arab land and the uh, Jewish land, Turkey opposed it because it thought that historically this was a, a, a one, uni, one united geography and it opposed. But when the United Nations decided in 1947 to divide it, then 
Turkey was the first Muslim country to recognize Israel as a state, the first Muslim country. And this continued from that time on, and the Turkey's relations with Israel have always been very good because of the strong uh, Jewish community also in Istanbul, which part of them immigrated to Israel after the establishment of the Israel state. So the relations have always been very good. And Israel and Turkey were the only democratic countries in the region. So this was a united, uniting factor. And also economic relations developed very well. So all these things contributed to the good relations uh, between Turkey and Israel. And as a, uh, as a side effect of this, Israel or, or Jewish lobby in the United States uh, in the Congress were the strongest lobby in favor of Turkey. When there was a motion, something to be discussed in the Congress, either in the House of Commons or uh, in the uh, Senate, uh, the Jewish lobby always favored, played in favor of uh, in, in Turkey. So this was a very important asset to counter the Greek lobby against Turkey and Armenian lobby. The Jewish lobby was countering them. Now that the relations went wrong for a reason difficult to explain, most probably religious factor is one of them. So Turkey is siding with Hamas. Hamas is... Uh, it's recognized as a terrorist group in the United it, States, of course. It is terrorist. It was terrorist. I mean, Turkey did not recognize, uh, uh, did not support Hamas for several years. And uh, Hamas and the Muslim brothers also had close relations. And in Turkey, the ruling party, AKP, AK Party, has also ideological resemblance with, with the Muslim Brotherhood. So there is an affinity that, is, that goes back to Hamas, Muslim Brother, and the Turkey's ruling party. Mm -hmm. Because of this, the relations between Israel and Turkey went wrong, and Turkey committed a lot of mistake, mistakes in its relations with Israel. The Mavi Marmara was a mistake, and the cutting the relations was a mistake, etc. So uh, relations with Israel is one set of things whose dynamics are not the same with the relations with Saudi Arabia. With Saudi Arabia, we don't have, we should not have any problem because I mean, both are Sunni countries and Turkey is dominated by Sunni ideology. The Hashukchi uh, murder was a case, of course, of course. But it, it, it had to be solved amicably again by catching the people who were responsible for it and, and punish them. Uh, relations with Iran is entirely different because uh, Turkey's relations with Iran has very little in common with Turkey's relations with uh, United, United States, Iran, and Turkey and Iran have completely different content of the relations. Iran and Turkey uh, have been side by side important country in the Middle East for centuries. The present border between Turkey and Iran, which was drawn in 1639, uh, 380 years ago, uh, is the one of the oldest borders that did not change one inch throughout the centuries. So there is a stable relation. Sometimes the two countries kick each other under the table, but later on they come to a modus vivendi and they continue their relations. So uh, Iran and Turkey, despite difficulties that they have, Iran is governed by a Shia authority and Turks 
are majority Sunni. This is a dividing line. There is a very strong Azeri, Turkic-speaking uh, people in the, Iran, yes. in Iran. So, uh, which is estimated between twenty-six and thirty-five thousand, uh, million. Uh, so, this is another factor. But despite this, the two countries maintain stable relations. Yeah. And Turkey does not support American embargo on, on Iran because it affects negatively Turkey's relations with Iran from the economic standpoint. So, so the relations with Egypt is entirely different. I mean, with Egypt, Turkey did not have any problem. It's only because the Egyptian regime by of Mursi, which was Muslim Brotherhood minded, and which has uh, uh, ideological affinity with Turkish ruling party. So when Mursi uh, was overthrown by Sisi, then Turkey cut the relations. It is mostly ideological. I mean, it is because of the Muslim Brotherhood like-mindedness that we have bad relations. So the the dynamics of all relations are different. So they cannot be put in the same basket and uh, assessed in the same manner. And, and, mm -hmm. and uh, as, as you mentioned in the in the beginning of the this question that it, it should stay a priority for uh, the Turkish government to try to uh, improve these relations. And um, that, that's why I, I think it's, it's an interesting uh, question also whether or not, um, despite the tensions between um, the Biden administration or well, any US administration in the last several years and the Turkish government, whether or not um, they would do more in this direction just to see a general relaxation of, you know, the years of tension that have so far been brewing between, um, you know, frankly, many American allies at this point in the region. And given Biden's own history on the topic, it, it, it does seem like an area they can potentially work in. Uh, actually, Russia is working hard day and night in order to drive a wedge in NATO. So isolate Turkey, Turkey or uh, distance Turkey from NATO and the, create a crack in NATO. And the United States and, uh, and Turkey should not fall into this trap. Fortunately, uh, Biden is a person who knows Turkey. It's a long history has, of Tur Turkey, yes. I mean, the, the background, who came to Turkey several times and uh, who served as senator for decades and who served as the vice president. So it is not like uh, Trump who decided on telephone, uh, do it and do that uh, uh, without considering thoroughly the items which is under discussion. So uh, I presume that the relations between United States and Turkey in the Biden period will become more institutionalized uh, and that'll apply to the Middle East also with, with in, those countries? It will ha have positive effect in the Middle East. Uh, and Turkey, without the American intervention, has to improve its relations with the Middle Eastern countries, with Egypt to, to, to begin with, and uh, uh, find an exit strategy, both for its involvement in Syria and in Libya, and it should also balance its relations with uh, Iraq and continue the good relations or fluctuating relations with Iran as it was in the past. So uh, I I am more hopeful. I'm I'm looking. I'm more optimistic about the future relations between United States and Turkey, because uh, if the United States does not want to create a crack within NATO, uh, it will be NATO which will lose 
Turkey will lose and the United States will lose. All of us will lose. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, I don't think I don't think that uh, both Biden himself and uh, his institutional mechanism will allow this to happen. Mm -hmm. Uh, speaking speaking of NATO, I think it, it's important then to ask the, about how the U.S. and Turkey relationship also includes um, very much the Turkish relationship with the European Union, especially with all of the issues going on in the Eastern Mediterranean between um, Turkey, Turkey, um, Greece, Cyprus, and France, and of course this is play. This is at times tied into some of the other issues like what Turkey has with other Middle Eastern countries like e Egypt and Israel or the war in Libya. Um, but, you know, just, just as you mentioned, Joe Biden has a lot of history when it comes to Turkey. He also has a lot of history when it came to um, some of those issues in the East Mediterranean that often isn't brought up, such as um, experience with, well, he was still around when, um, you know, the initial partition of Cyprus took place. Um, he has a long history with the with Greece. And when he was running for when he was running for president, he also made critical statements against Turkey's role in the in that region. So um, back also in December, when the European Union declined to sanction Turkey, um, as Greece and Cyprus might have hoped for, the reason given was in part because they wanted to wait on the Biden administration to come into office to coordinate um, policy together. But taking taking that, I want to ask you um, if you think the US taking a stronger role in this conflict will actually um, help it be solved or do you think it just, or do you think it carries a lot of risks of alienating um, one side or the other? There, there are risks because uh... Biden in the past uh, was very active in the anti-Turkey motions being debated in the uh, US, uh, US Senate, US Congress. Uh, I saw recently uh, a clip somewhere in which uh, Biden uh, introduced himself as now you have a good friend in the White House, uh, Joe uh, Bidenopoulos. He referred to himself as uh, Bidenopoulos with, with the Greek ending mm -hmm. of the uh, family name. This shows to what extent he committed himself to the Greek cause. In the past also, he always supported the uh, anti-Turkey uh, motions in the uh, U.S. Congress. So there is this path. But of course, despite this, Biden is, is a, a statesman which has a long history. So he is likely to, to make lesser mistakes than uh, Trump, who decided, uh, I mean, uh, instantaneously. So uh, these parameters are there. So we have to bear in mind that uh, we cannot expect when the two sides, Greek side and Turkey side, are on equal footing in, in, in being right, he will, Biden will favor the Greek side. It is, we expect this. But uh, in many cases in the Eastern Mediterranean, Turkey's so right. It is, it is very strong, it has very strong right, provable, approvable right, that uh, even uh, a, a pro-Greek statement cannot easily deny to Turkey. For instance, the, the question of the Castello Rizzo Island, which is a tiny island of 10 square yeah. uh, kilometer, and uh, which came, because of this uh, uh, tiny island, uh, Greece wants to get 4,000 times bigger maritime jurisdiction uh, area in the Mediterranean because of this island. It is unfair. And uh, many 
verdicts of the International Court of Justice, like the ones in Jersey Island, in the uh, yeah the English Channel, between the, in the English Channel, and also Martin Island in in Canada. So, and seventeen uh, more. Uh, there are seventeen more different uh, court cases that proves that Turkey's case is right. So. Uh, when there are all these uh, proven reserve, pr pr proven uh, examples, I presume that uh, even a person who is biased in favor of Greece will not accept, uh, will not admit that Turkey is wrong. There are areas, gray, gray areas, where Turkey is not as strong as the Castellarizzo case, but the, it depends. I mean, it, there are so many questions in the Eastern Mediterranean and the Aegean Sea that uh, for everyone, there's a different criteria. So uh, uh, Eastern Mediterranean is, is one thing. You also mentioned the relations with the European Union and European Union also plans to put, uh, to impose uh, sanctions. Sanctions in the past did not, work against Turkey. On the contrary, it helped Turkey to develop its own uh, defense industry. When United States imposed uh, embargo in 1974, thanks to this, Turkey established the present uh, defense industry directorate and started to produce defense equipment. The uh, uh, drones that played very important role in Idlib and also in Nagorno-Karabakh are also produced of this wrong decision or the or embargo put on Turkey by the United States that Turkey decided to develop its own industry. So when embargo is imposed on Turkey, it works in favor of Turkey in the long run. In the short run, there may be difficulties, but I don't think that any country in the neighborhood will invade one another. Yeah. Uh, the Turkey, uh, Turkey. So Turkey can sustain its uh, uh, defense for, for some time. And by that time, uh, Turkey will develop its own industry. We have a proverb in Turkey, we say, which says that bad neighbors make you own utensils that you, you did not have because he, he will not, they will not, the bad neighbors will not borrow, uh, lend you uh, kitchen utensils and the other. So you have to buy it. So what the United States is doing now and what the European Union is also doing, as a bad neighbor, they push Turkey to acquire its own uh, utensils. Mm -hmm. So uh, I would like to to just move, bring bring the conversation back full back around to um, uh, the U.S. relationship with Turkey just bi bilaterally as my last question. And I saw an article by um, former Turkish diplomat um, Sinan Ulgin. He's also now at um, Carnegie Carnegie the Carnegie Institute in Europe, yeah. and he had an an op ed in the Financial Times where he said that. In terms of a possible reset, to borrow that term, um, for um, to U the United States and Turkey, it was possible, he said, but it would be very difficult. And his proposed suggestions were that the U.S. would need to rethink its support for, uh, you know, the Syrian, the Syrian Kurds, the YPG, um, set conditions for operating the S-400 without getting rid of them, um, lifting the sanctions on Turkey, and letting them back into the F-35 program. Those were um, some of the suggestions he offered in his piece. And he, but he didn't, he didn't necessarily offer too, too many specifics on what exactly Turkey could offer also as compromises to the United States. Um, since of course this compromise will have to go both ways if they were to want a reset. But what, what I would like to um, close off and ask you is, what kind of concessions do you think Turkey is would be would have to make or is ready to make to um, actually achieve any genuine improvement in the relationship with the U.S.? 
again, for each item that you mentioned, that's to say uh, S400 and the Kurdish issue and the other, the dynamics and the composition are different. So uh, needs different medicines to cure them. Uh, on the Kurdish issue, uh, for Turkey, it is an important question, but Turkey has to understand that the, the Kurdish question is also very important for the United States. Actually, Kurdish cause, not the present YPG or, and the PKK on the uh, PYD, yes. etc., but Kurdish cause in general is important for all big countries that have the international aspirations, such as the United States, European Union, or United Kingdom, Russia, etc. These countries need to have the Kurdish card in their pocket. It's not only against Turkey. It is because the Kurdish issue, not the cause, but the Kurdish issue, is an important issue with uh, 35 to 42 million inhabitants, Kurdish people. Uh, it is the, the only people in the world that do not have their independent states. And these Kurdish people are spread in mainly in four uh, countries in the Middle East, which are all very critical countries, Iran, Turkey, Iraq, and Syria. And the majority of them are oil rich countries and uh, any big country global power would like to have this such an important card in its pocket so that it could play in the when it becomes necessary against to divide iran to create turbulence in iran or in syria or in iraq or in turkey so it is only natural that all the countries, Russia, uh, Britain, and the France, and the United States, want to keep this card in their hand. Turkey has to understand this to begin with. And second, there is a second reason for the United States, not for the other, United States, to keep the Kurdish card in its pocket. It is the security of Israel. Israel is surrounded by hostile countries, Arab countries. And in, in the international relations, there is a golden rule which says that you have to be in good terms with the countries which is beyond your immediate neighbor. So that when your neighbor does something wrong, you can use the country beyond your immediate border as a leverage. So. Uh, for Israel, the hostile countries which is surrounding Israel, they need friendly countries beyond the immediate neighbors. In the past, Turkey and uh, Iran were good uh, neighbors, I mean, good uh, second neighbors uh, for Israel. Now, Kurdish entity whether it is it is going to become an independent state in the future in the long run of course there is possibility for them to become independent uh, countries depending which country we are talking about in iraq they are very close to independence that they even carried out independence referendum and they, they won it but the international constellation the order of the stars in the sky were not suitable for the approval of the independence, but it is there. And uh, in Iran, we do not know at what stage the Kurdish uh, independent movement is strong, but at least there are two provinces in Iran, which is called Kurdistan, mm -hmm. inhabited by Kurdistan. Uh, in Syria, depending how the Syrian situation will emerge, uh, uh, the Kurds will either gain some sort of municipal rights of, of uh, decentralization, or they may have uh, 
autonomous regions or in the future perhaps independence. Uh, in Turkey, I see that the, the, the Kurdish situation is slightly different because the biggest Kurdish city in Turkey is Istanbul. It's not Diyarbakir. Mm -hmm. The second biggest Kurdish city is again Izmir, not Diyarbakir. The third city is perhaps Mersin, again not Diyarbakir. So the Kurds are everywhere in Turkey. They own factories in the outskirts of Istanbul. They own waterfront villas, yalas on, on the Bosphorus. They own holiday villages on the coast of the Mediterranean. There are tens of thousands and perhaps over 100,000 Kurdish young men and young girls are working there. So when, if one day the question of the separation of a Kurdish independence somewhere uh, comes to the agenda, I wonder how the reasonable sort, the mainstream Kurds will vote. Would they like to stay the citizen of a Turkey with their factory in Istanbul and waterfront villas in, 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 on the Bosphorus and holiday villages or, uh, in, uh, uh, on the Mediterranean? Or would they agree to live in the on the top of mountains of Gilo Mountains in the east, in a landlocked country, and in small country, uh, how many uh, population will there be? We do not know. So we should not. Of course, there are idealist young Kurds who would not settle for anything less than full independence of Kurds. But we should not look after them, we, we should not try to persuade them. Instead, we should look at what the mainstream Kurds believe. Mm. My perception is that mainstream Kurds in Turkey would be happier to be part of uh, 84 million inhabitants Turkey and with their uh, factory in Istanbul and the uh, holiday village in, uh, in, in the Mediterranean, et cetera. And, uh, but, but enjoy cultural freedom, fundamental rights and freedom. If Turkey achieves this, both Kurds and non-Kurds in tur Turkey, Turks, Laz, and the Circassians, Georgians, et cetera, living in, in Turkey, they will all benefit. and. Turkey will be a happier country. So the, the cause of, of the Kurdish cause surfaces in Iraq in a different manner, in Syria in a different manner, in Iran in a different manner, in Turkey in a different manner. So Turkey, instead of following the present policy and in front of the uh, falling in uh, disagreement with the United States, it could have done something much, much reasonable, in my opinion. Instead of pushing the PYD or uh, YPG, the, the military branch, into the arms of PKK, which is recognized as a uh, yeah, terrorist country in the United States, they should be. They should find a, a, a middle way between the. Syrian Kurds and Turkish Kurds and incorporate the United States in this bargaining and tell these Syrian Kurds that, look, United States is here today, Russia is here today, but they will go one day or another from back from this period. But you and I, you the Kurds and we the Turks, we are going to stay here forever. Our families are divided. One brother is on the Syrian side of the border, the other is the Turkish side. So we, we, we drink the water of the same river. We enjoy the same geography. So let's find a way to protect each other's interest. For instance, we do not allow you to implement the policy of forced immigration of the Turkmen villages in Syria 
and bring in Kurds from other places and change the ethnic composition of the of, of this area. We don't allow you, and the international community will not allow it either. So, United States, Turkey, and uh, even uh, Bashar Assad, if you come together and agree on the principle that is interesting and that is acceptable to the international community, this is how the Turkey's Syrian Kurdish problem could have been solved. Mm -hmm. And what, what about the um, other areas where they can find some sort of um, compromise or offer a concession, like say the S-400, um, that one of course, and the sanctions, those two also seem to weigh, you know, of course, very heavily on the US-Turkey relationship. And, um, you know, it just took a whole new level in December when um, the Trump administration actually initiated those um, first round of sanctions on Turkey. Um, do you think that there are concessions that Turkey can find there when it comes to the S-400? For the 400s, I believe that uh, Turkey cannot lock them in a storage. It is difficult. And uh, as long as there is no war between Russia and Turkey, uh, these good relations will continue. But Turkey may find, I mean, NATO uh, soldiers, the officials, they can find a solution to keep the uh, S-400 separate, which cannot affect the NATO air defense ground environment. Because America, United States at present, claims that uh, the S-400 may identify the weaknesses of the F-35. Mm -hmm. I believe that the, the weaknesses of the F-35 could be identified by the Russian S-400, which is uh, deployed in uh, Ladakia in, in Syria, Syria, or in the Baltic Seas, in Bulgaria, in, in many other places. In, in, oh, 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 so so the, there is a way of separating uh, and preventing that the uh, harm that could be done to the F-35 by the S-400 could be limited as it is in other countries. So uh, Turkey's F-400 will not be any worse danger than the S-400 or F-300 like in, in Crete. Uh, and there is also, of course, in Latakia now. So it is there. You don't need the border of Turkey in order to identify this. It is there. I mean, you, you can identify the weaknesses of S, uh, F-35 with or without the S-400 being deployed in Turkey. So I think that there is a way for the technicians, for the knowledgeable people in this area to find a, a middle ground on this area. Okay, well, I, I do. I do also feel like you know there there are a number of there's are a lot of other topics that I I would like to go go into further with the, with this relationship. There's there's bound to be a lot more coming in the next next few years with with the Biden administration, um, with the way things have already started. But um, Yashar, Yashar, I really do appreciate getting your time today and having you on the show. I do hope you, that um, I can have you back some, on sometime in the future to go back into these. Okay, thank you, with pleasure. My name is Nicholas Morgan, and this is Turkey Abroad.